morning. Thanks for coming out today. It's a little bit uh, chilly, and sometimes, you know, sarcoidosis patients have difficulty in the cold weather, so it's great for you all to be here, and we're really excited about hosting this event, and all the speakers are really excited about uh, speaking to you today. So I'm going to start on a very general level and talk to you about what is sarcoidosis. So sometimes things can be defined as what they are not. And sarcoidosis is not a rare disease. It's considered somewhat of a rare disease, but the more we see it, the more we realize that um, there are a lot of people who have sarcoidosis. It's traditionally been considered a rare disease because so many people walk around with sarcoidosis and they don't even know they have it. Um, but if you take the statistics, for example, amyloidosis is a, is a disease where proteins build up in the tissues. And that's considered an orphan disease. And um, that's probably about, there are probably half the number of cases in amyloidosis as there are sarcoidosis every year. Um, so if sarcoidosis has double the number of cases per year, it's really not considered a rare disease. Sarcoidosis doesn't only affect African Americans. It affects, <laughs> it affects African Americans more severely, and there are probably some genetic reasons for that but it is not only an African-American disease. It's not a terminal illness, okay? Most, most patients, like I said, probably about 70%, they walk around with sarcoidosis, they don't know they have it, and they do just fine. It's the 25% that um, we focus on and we have to um, manage. Sarcoidosis is not an autoimmune disease. Many people come to me every day and they say, my immune system supp is uh, suppressed, I can't take I, can I get the flu shot, for example? It's not an autoimmune disease. Your, your immune system is actually hyperactive in sarcoidosis. And um, uh, it has features that are consistent with autoimmune diseases, but it's not a prototypical autoimmune disease. Sarcoidosis doesn't spread to different organs. It's another common question that I always get. Sarcoid is everywhere in your body, and the real question is why is it active in some organs versus others? Sarcoidosis is not a disease with stages. Patients come, they say, do I have stage four sarcoidosis? Does that mean it's terrible? And the answer is no. The chest X-ray is staged, okay? But not the sarcoidosis itself. It's not like a cancer where there's stages of disease. <coughs> Patients with sarcoidosis don't have flare-ups. We characterize say my sarcoidosis is bad, it's flaring up. Um, as doctors, we don't like to really use that term. We like to use the term becoming active. We like to use the term uh, I'm developing an exacerbation. There are various terms, but flare-ups is, is sort of a different process, and that really um, speaks more towards inflammatory bowel disease and, and other diseases. And prednisone is not the only treatment for, for sarcoidosis. We've had lots of talks about this in our sarcoidosis support group, and um, we know that there are other medications. Um, and uh, we're hoping to develop new medications for sarcoidosis. So what is sarcoidosis? We can also define it by what it is. Sarcoidosis is an inflammatory disease. It's a granulomatous disease, which I'll talk to you about more in a minute. It's a partially genetic disease. It's not a prototypical genetic disease like cystic fibrosis. Sarcoidosis usually affects middle-aged adults. Um, it can affect any organ. Uh, it causes more severe disease in African Americans, and the cause of sarcoidosis is unknown. And because the cause is unknown, right now we don't have a cure for the disease, but we're working on it. The diagnosis of sarcoidosis, excuse me for that typo, um, requires a tissue biopsy, and sarcoidosis is usually a treatable disease, as I said before. So, what is inflammation? I said sarcoidosis is an inflammatory disease. Inflammation is a process that's caused by injury to the tissues. Um, when you go to medical school, it's characterized by five signs, okay? Pain, heat, redness, swelling, and loss of function. So the scenario is, is that there's some stimulus that causes injury to a tissue. Um, the tissue then kicks out chemicals that are inflammatory in nature and they recruit all these cells, and these chemicals cause pain, heat, redness, and swelling. And if the inflammation goes on long enough, we get loss of function in the tissue. 
What's a granuloma? I said that sarcoid is a granulomatous disease. What is a granuloma? Well, a granuloma are collections of immune cells. Um, immune cells are cells that are programmed to fight infection. They're programmed to function in inflammation, okay? And a granuloma is a collection of these immune cells. I'm gonna show you a picture in a minute. And these granulomas form within tissues, and sometimes they sit there and they do nothing and they don't cause any problems. And sometimes they cause inflammation, and if the inflammation is severe enough, it causes the tissue to lose its function. So right here I have, this is a diagram of a granuloma, and these are, you can really ignore the, the arrows and the names, these are just fancy names for cells. Um, but you can see that it's a collection of cells and there's some sort of stimulus that incites the granuloma formation. That's a picture in the middle. Let's see if I can do this here. Where is the, uh, there we go. So this is a granuloma under the microscope. You can see there's all these inflammatory cells and here is the center, okay? And then this is a picture of a granuloma in the skin. Many of you have skin disease. And um, you can see that this is what the granuloma looks like in the skin. So I said in initially that sarcoidosis is partially a genetic disease. And we know that there are certain genes that, are, that increase one's risk of developing sarcoidosis. And we know that there are genes that influence um, the presentation that somebody has, the clinical presentation. Some people have disease in their lungs, or most people have disease in their lungs. Some people have it in their heart. Some people have it in their kidneys. Um, probably there are genetics reasons for this. And Dr. Padilla is going to talk a lot more about the comorbidities associated with sarcoidosis. Genes probably determine, at least in part, why somebody's sarcoidosis goes away and why somebody's sarcoidosis never goes away. Okay? Well, there have been many, there have been a lot of recent studies that have looked at certain genes that tell us why somebody has a good prognosis with respect to their sarcoid and why somebody doesn't. We also know that there are certain markers in sarcoidosis, skin disease, for example, that's a marker of chronic disease. I tell patients all the time that if they have skin disease, in all likelihood their sarcoid isn't gonna go away. They're gonna have it for a very long period of time. Just because they have skin disease doesn't mean that their sarcoid's gonna be horrible. It just means that they're gonna have it for a while. Genes determine why sarcoid is more severe in African Americans. Genes probably determine why one patient's sarcoidosis involves the heart, another involves the liver. I've said that already. And just because you have sarcoidosis doesn't mean your kids are gonna have sarcoidosis, and it doesn't mean your family members will have sarcoidosis. It's not a disease that works that way in the sense that, you know, if you're a carrier of disease, that you automatically pass it down to somebody else. That's not to say that there aren't families that have sarcoidosis. There's been studies on this. Uh, there are siblings and clusters of families that all have sarcoidosis, and their genetic profile is probably different than the genetic profile of somebody, of other people who don't have family clusters of sarcoidosis, but we haven't figured that out yet. <coughs> so what causes sarcoidosis? Well, sarcoidosis was first discovered in the late 18s, uh, about 1877, usually it's 1869, depending on what you read. And we still don't know what the cause of sarcoidosis is. We've done a lot of work, and we have some ideas. Um, but I think that most experts would agree that sarcoidosis is probably caused by some foreign substance or foreign substances. Um, it's not clear whether there's one substance or multiple substance yet. Um, but there's something, some stimulus, and I talked about this earlier with the inflammation, there's some stimulus that causes tissue injury. And the thought is, is that we probably inhale this stimulus, and for whatever reason, probably our genetics, we're predisposed to um, not deal with this substance very well. The immune system gets all excited and hyperactive, and... Um, the, the hyperactive immune system triggers these immune cells, the cells that are involved in inflammation, the cells that are involved in infection, to come and form granulomas. As I said before, the granulomas enter the organs. Um, sometimes they just sit there, they don't cause problems. Other times they produce a lot of inflammation, they disrupt the function of the organ, and that's when you get symptoms. 
So if you have a granuloma in the lung, you may cough, you may wheeze, you may have shortness of breath. Um, if you have it um, in the nervous system, you may have some neuro neurologic deficit. Um, but why that happens, we don't really know. So the point I want to emphasize is that the symptoms really depend on the organ that's affected. So the organ that has the inflamed granulomas that's the, are the symptoms that a patient has. And I think I've made that clear. If you have granulomas in your lungs, you're going to cough, you're going to wheeze, you're going to have shortness of breath. If you have it in other organs, you're going to have other problems. So this is just a, a brief overview. This doesn't cover every single organ. But you can see there's an affected organ up top here. Whoops, I'm sorry. There's an affected organ up top here. And then there's signs and symptoms. So if your lungs are affected, if you have granulomas in your lungs, you're going to get shortness of breath, cough, wheeze, skin. You're going to get rashes, maybe ulcerations, maybe nodules. In your eyes, you can get pain. You can get redness. You can get blurred vision. If it goes on long enough, you may develop glaucoma or cataracts. In your heart, you can get chest pain. You can get palpitations, a racing heart. You may faint. You may have abnormal heart rhythms. Your heart may not be pumping well. You may have buildup of fluid, heart failure. Nervous system, you may have weakness, numbness, pain, paralysis, etc. And in the nasal passages, um, you can have congestion, you can have pain, and because of the, the obstructing lesions in the sinuses, you can get recurrent infections. Nosebleeds are very common, and a lot of you tell me that you've lost your sense of smell. Um, so that's fairly common as well. Joint disease, you can get pain, swelling, deformities, all of the above. So how do we diagnose sarcoidosis? Well, we diagnose sarcoidosis pretty easily. The doctor talks to the patient, says, OK, your symptoms are consistent with sarcoidosis. The doctor examines the patient, says, yeah, there are some exam findings that look like sarcoidosis. I see that skin lesion there. It looks like sarcoidosis to me. Maybe we need a biopsy. But I think that you know I've seen sarcoidosis enough before. It looks like a skin lesion. Then we do some blood work, we do breathing tests, we do x-rays, CAT scans. All of this supporting information helps us to decide whether you may or may not have sarcoidosis. But in most cases, we need a tissue biopsy. And we can get a biopsy in a variety of different ways. Um, we can, the standard way to do it is to do a bronchoscopy, um, which is a procedure where we biopsy the lung or the lymph nodes in the chest. Um, but virtually any organ can be biopsied, and if we see a skin lesion, we may biopsy that because it's more accessible than going down into the lungs. When the biopsies demonstrate granulomas, um, and there are no other causes of granulomas, common causes like bacteria, um, and they're the right kind of granulomas, they're all different kinds, um, and they're present in more than one organ, and we have all of this other information that I've spoken of, then we say somebody has sarcoidosis. So sarcoidosis is treated with a variety of medications. All of them suppress inflammation. All of them are to some extent, or really to a large extent, nonspecific. Because we don't know what causes sarcoidosis, we can't eliminate it. But we can suppress the inflammation that comes from the granulomas. Um, prednisone is the most effective, in my opinion, uh, medication that we have for sarcoidosis. But as all of you know, it needs to be used um, carefully. And it, can, it shouldn't be used in high doses for a long period of time. Um, there are other anti-inflammatory medicines. I'm not going to go into therapy, but many of you are on Plaquenil or hydroxychloroquine, which happens to be a very effective medicine for, this, for skin disease, sinus disease, and joint disease. That's all, folks. <laughs>